How's it going ladies and bruises, I'm Bobby Sixkiller and welcome to something completely different. Today instead of shouting at video games, taking the piss of evil publishing corporations, kinda, or wallowing in nostalgia, I'd like to spend some time talking to you all about the Yakuza franchise, as a whole, and why this is one of the few remaining examples of what AAA video games used to be, and should still be. Yakuza is a franchise that was bought in 2005 on the PlayStation 2, and while hailed as a spiritual successor to Shenmue, of which you know I'm a fan, I've not been able to find any evidence confirming this, however, you can see the incredible similarities between the franchise in terms of both gameplay and structure. Both revolve around a stern-faced man who's very good at punching people. Now despite being a huge Shenmue fan, I unfortunately missed the Yakuza series until Yakuza 3. I got it in the bargain bit at EB Games along with Yakuza 4. I was that far behind. And even though it was years ago, I still remember it in perfect detail. And if you know anything about me and my memory, you'll know that that's a miracle. <laughs> Yakuza 3 is a great game that suffered from the try to sense of a western market problem, but Yakuza 4 had none of that and was outstanding. The story was fun and interesting, the characters were well written and sympathetic, the gameplay was varied and kept you on your toes, but most of all the combat is a brutal, beautiful, cathartic masterpiece, but this is back in the day when AAA meant something more than a hollow live service that can only be filled with all the money in the world. Now fast forward to the late 2010s, the time of live services, loot boxes, microtransactions and the Grim Reaper and Sega is still releasing Yakuza games. Now in their full Japanese weirdness glory and thank god for Sega. Now I'm not saying Sega is some perfect infallible corporation, they gave off the distinct air of xenophobia in the mid to late 2000s, not releasing anything outside of Japan apart from awful, awful, awful Sonic games, <laughs> citing no western market, which seems like a crock of shit to me. Anyway, Yakuza 0 was what finally made me realise what we've been missing out on for the better part of the decade. I backed off AAA games and stuck to indie titles almost completely. Yakuza 0 was and is what all AAA games should aspire to be. It's... What was that word again? That's right, fun! You remember that? Fun? The primary thing AAA publishers have been trying to squeeze out of their games to make room for grinded microtransactions for the past decade. Yakuza 0 is an open world game that came out in a time when everyone was suffering from open world fatigue. I like to call it Ubisoft disease. See my uh, Ubisoft rant video. And it did great nonetheless, because it was an open world game the way it should be done. A small familiar world packed to the brim with unique and interesting content, whereby just wandering around you never know who you might meet or what could happen. None of the stronghold taking do this 50 times and win cookie cutter bullshit. The writing is astonishing. Never have I played a game that could be so dead serious one second and training a dominatrix the next without the tonal shift being completely jarring. It pulls off its camp silly stuff in the side missions and it feels natural and it's a great break from the high intensity emotional roller coaster of the main stories. The story is intense and unpredictable and it's got a genuine emotional response from me on, an, on numerous occasions. Helping push the emotion to 11 is the cast of perfectly written characters that some you'll love and some you'll love to hate. This kind of writing is absent in all but a few sparkling jewels in the mud in AAA games. Now let's talk microtransactions. Wait we can't because Yakuza doesn't have any. Just like it doesn't have any tacked on out of place multiplayer mode, not only is it completely devoid of all horrible business practices, but when Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kiwami finally came to PC it was released at only 28 New Zealand dollars, around 19 US dollars. Not only not greedy business practices, but a downright charitable price for a game you can comfortably put 60 plus hours in without boring repetitive content. I don't really know how to finish this, but to say that this is what AAA game developers and publishers should be trying to emulate. What happened to the AAA industry? Do you remember when EA put out Mass Effect? Or Dragon Age? Or Burnout Paradise? Dragon Age 1 that is specifically. It's almost as if the developers making the Yakuza franchise love doing what they do and are passionate about making something wonderful, and Sega is smart enough to let them do what they do without sticking their stupid fat noses and sniff around for ill-gotten gains. Sorry, this is meant to be focused more on the good that is the Yakuza franchise, and less on the absolute self-destroying shit show that is the AAA <laughs> industry as it stands today. But hopefully I got my point across. In the end, there's nothing wrong with looking forward, but you need to bring the knowledge you have learned along the way with you to make informed decisions, and this is an obvious point of contention for publishers who wish to erase and forget about anything that isn't currently making them millions. I want to know what you bruises think of AAA games here at the end of the 2010s, and if you played any of the Yakuza games, and what you think of them and if they had any impact on you. Let's talk about it in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.